Hi guys! In this video, we are going to check out the 20 best things to do in New York City. It is the center of Western art, entertainment, food trends, fashion, and finance. If you compile a video like this, you could get cute and uncertain. It's true that 20 things aren't enough for a city like New York, which is why our list features all the big hitters, from the Statue of Liberty to Central Park, Ellis Island, and the Brooklyn Bridge. Even if a few thousand tourists surround you, these things are non-negotiable if you want to do New York justice. There's nothing like being able to experience the breathtaking sights and sounds of a city that has been immortalized in television shows and movies, and that inspires wonder and awe in even the most cynical of travelers. Let's find out what NYC has to offer by exploring these top attractions. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Washington Square Park. It occupies 9.75 acres in the Greenwich Village, neighborhood of Lower Manhattan, New York City. As one of New York City's best-known parks, it is also a meeting place and a center of cultural activity. This park is operated by the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation. Located at the lower end of Fifth Avenue and surrounded by New York University, Washington Square Park is a great place to escape the city for a while. Today's park lineup of street performers and buskers still reflects that bohemian spirit. At the end of Fifth Avenue, you can see the triumphal Washington Square Arch that was built in 1892 to mark George Washington's centenary. New York City Helicopter Tour Observation decks may leave you feeling like you missed out on a spot of Manhattan from above. Almost no cityscape is better suited to a helicopter tour than New York, so it's no wonder there are so many options for helicopter tours here. The main highlights of the New York City helicopter tour is its panoramic views of the Hudson River, the Chrysler Building, the Brooklyn Bridge, Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty, the New York Harbor, and the USS Intrepid. The flight takes off from Pier 6 and lasts between 15 to 30 minutes, but gives you lifelong memories. American Museum of Natural History A must-see for anyone who loves museums, the American Museum of Natural History is a breathtaking collection of specimens curated to the highest standards. There are four to five permanent exhibition halls spread across 28 interconnected buildings on four floors. There are numerous large collections of zoology, botany, geology, mineralogy, and anthropology, so you can indulge even the most obscure interests. There is nothing quite like the fossil halls, especially the cock dinosaur wing, exhibiting a tantalizing fraction of the museum's collection. The Milstein Family Hall of Ocean Life features a life-sized replica of a blue whale, almost 30 meters long and swooping from the ceiling. In the Rose Center for Earth in Space, the Hayden Planetarium is housed in an enormous sphere, while the museum's own Max Theater displays eye-popping 2D and 3D films. Battery Park one of the best spots in the city to watch the sun go down is this smallish park at the southern tip of Manhattan. Across the street, the Staten Island Ferry departs, and you can make the trip to Ellis Island and Liberty Island, or just sit and gaze at the Statue of Liberty during the day or at night. This park's name comes from the coastal gun emplacements that once stood on this spot, and it's home to flower beds, lawns, ornamental shrubs, and an urban farm. St. Patrick's Cathedral. This majestic neo-Gothic wonder occupied an entire city block after undergoing a $177 million restoration that took three years. The building dates back to 1878. Designed in the decorated Gothic style, 
St. Patrick's Cathedral is made of brick clad with dazzling Tuckahoe marble. There are twin spires over 100 meters in height, facing Fifth Avenue, and a combined nave choir that measures 101.2 meters between the two avenues. The cathedral is free to enter, with opulent sculpture in various side chapels, the rare rose window, ribbed vaulting, and a 1930 gallery organ enclosed in a wood casing. Coney Island In the early 20th century, this former barrier island was transformed into a peninsula. Coney Island has been a seaside getaway for New Yorkers for decades. Despite a lengthy downturn from the 1960s onward, the waterfront has been revitalized today while maintaining some of its scruffy appeals. One of the stalwart attractions in Coney Island is the Coney Island Cyclone, located in Luna Park. One of the oldest wooden roller coasters in the world, opened in 1927 and reached speeds of 60 miles per hour after the first 26-meter climb. There's also the Wonder Wheel at Dano's Wonder Wheel Amusement Park, which has stood since 1920 and offers clear views of Manhattan, Brooklyn's beaches, and the Rockaway Peninsula in the east. Bryant Park Bryant Park is actually set on top of the New York Public Library stacks after an underground section was built during a 1980s restoration. By the 1990s, New York had shed its reputation for prostitution and drug dealing, and the park's current layout reflects that time. Over 30 years later, Bryant Park is acclaimed for its sense of calm and is regarded as an urban regeneration project. During the summer, there's a movie night, and during the day, people play chess, ping pong, petanque, and take free classes in yoga, tai chi, and juggling. In addition to walking promenades hemmed by London planes, there are several places to grab a coffee, pastries, or something more substantial. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, the Bank of America Winter Village brings a rink and a sprinkle of seasonal magic to the park. A Depression-era relic reopened as a literary destination in 2003. New York Public Library The Stephen Allen Schwarzman Building is the main branch of the New York Public Library and is a landmark you'll recognize instantly. In addition to being the second largest public library system in the country, it is the third largest in the world and is a holdover from the first era of philanthropy. On Fifth Avenue, Midtown's Beaux-Arts facade features pairs of Corinthian columns topped with a frieze and offering barrel vaults. There are two lions flanking the steps, which symbolize the entire library. The monument features world-renowned collections in the humanities, fine arts, and social sciences, with free guided tours available Monday through Saturday at 11 a.m. and 14 p.m. Guggenheim Museum The Guggenheim Museum is an epoch-making work of 20th century architecture known for its splendid design, collection of impressionist and early modern art, and world-class temporary exhibitions. In Frank Lloyd Wright's building, visitors catch an elevator to the top before descending a ramp that curls around the atrium. It is another icon of modern architecture. This museum opened in 1959, but its collection dates back more than eight decades. Grand Central Terminal. A Beaux-Arts wonder, the Grand Central Terminal, 1913, features remarkable proportions, exceptional craftsmanship in its architecture and fittings, and more than 60 shops and 35 dining options. New Yorkers have gathered here for decades, and the building has 44 platforms, more than any other train station in the world. Turn your head back to see the mural of night sky constellations of 1912 by Paul Cesar Hellu and the 10 Beaux-Arts chandeliers weighing 360 kg and holding 110 bulbs. There is an information booth topped by a clock made of mesmerizing opalescent glass. 
Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration. Between 1892 and 1954, 12 million immigrants came to the United States via Ellis Island. The trip from Battery Park via statue cruises takes only a short time. The descendants of these immigrants make up nearly half of the United States' total population, which gives a sense of the importance of this site. Its main building dates back to 1900 and houses the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration. There is a wall of honor outside that lists some people who have gone through this process. A wealth of information panels, artifacts, photographs, videos, oral histories, and interactive stations can be found within the Renaissance Revival Building. There are more than 120 hours of audio content, covering such topics as what it was like to pass through Ellis Island, how America was populated in the 19th and 20th centuries, and immigration today. Union Square Union Square takes its name from the intersection of Broadway and Bowery Road, now 4th Avenue, in the area, which has nothing to do with the Civil War. After its construction in 1830, Union Square has been the site of protests and demonstrations due to its central location. As part of the centennial celebrations in 1876, the park includes a Frederick August Bartholdi sculpture of Gilbert du Modier, Marquis de Lafayette, and imposing statues of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln by Henry Kirk Brown. All year long, Union Square Green Market trades here on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Besides fresh produce, you can also find Christmas handicrafts at the Holiday Market, which opens in November. The Metropolitan Museum of Art Located on Fifth Avenue, the Metropolitan Museum of Art covers 5,000 years of applied and fine arts. Explore the largest gallery in the United States and marvel at Sumerian cuneiform tablets, Chinese calligraphy, classical sculpture, Egyptian mummies, old masters, Moorish textiles, Rococo fashion, armor worn by European monarchs, and valuable musical instruments, and that's to name a few. You could spend a whole day at the Met Museum of Art and still not see everything. Staten Island Ferry There's no better free thing to do in New York than riding the Staten Island Ferry across the upper New York Bay. The crossing is one of the last survivors of a system of ferries that shuttled people over the city's waterways before bridges were built. 22 million people use the service between Whitehall Street and St. George on Staten Island each year, and the five-mile journey takes about 25 minutes. Once you leave Manhattan, you'll be able to see the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, and the skyscrapers and bridges of Lower Manhattan in all their glory. Brooklyn Bridge and Park the Brooklyn Bridge, another landmark that makes New York, well, New York, connects Manhattan and Brooklyn across the East River, and was built in 1883 as the first steel wire suspension bridge in the world. This was also the first permanent crossing of the East River at that time. To prove the bridge's structural integrity, showman P.T. Barnum led a parade of 21 elephants across it in 1884. Its two neo-Gothic towers create a sense of drama, which rise 84 meters and anchor the intricate cable system. Pedestrians can cross the Brooklyn Bridge on the elevated walkway above the road and through the center of the towers for satisfying views of the city's silhouette and the cables above. With the completion of this park project, revitalizing 1.3 miles of Brooklyn's post-industrial waterfront, the Brooklyn Bridge track comes to a fitting end. Brooklyn Bridge Park has been in development for more than a decade, reclaiming land from the construction of the New World Trade Center and transforming Brooklyn Piers 1 to 6. The park has multiple sports facilities, playgrounds for children, and many places to eat. In Brooklyn Bridge Park, the river and views of the sunsets are spectacular. 
Empire State Building. Nearly 90 years after it was topped off, the timeless Empire State Building is still the 44th tallest skyscraper in the world, a testament to New York's ambition during the 20s and 30s. Until the One World Trade Center Observatory opened in 2011, the Art Deco Tower's roof soared 380 meters above the Midtown streets. By day, the panoramic views of the city that never sleeps can stretch as far as Pennsylvania and Massachusetts from the main deck on the 86th floor. Up on the 102nd floor is an indoor observatory that was once a docking station for airships, and it can be accessed with an upgrade. Times Square. It's something you'll have to see, especially if you're a first-time visitor. It is the largest commercial intersection in Midtown Manhattan, as well as a tourist destination, an entertainment center, and a neighborhood. It is formed by Broadway, 7th Avenue, and 42nd Street. In an urban ravine walled by dazzling electronic billboards, Broadway's theater district is centered around Times Square, a bow tie shaped plaza at Broadway and 7th Avenue intersection. On busy days, more than 460,000 people pass through Times Square, and up to a million attend the New Year's ball drop, a tradition dating back to 1907. There are designated areas for street performers, and paths guide you through the crowds. Times Square's popularity is largely due to the theaters along Broadway, Lincoln Center, and the Theater District. The area is busiest during annual festivities, especially New Year's evening. The National 9-11 Memorial and Museum is a sad but necessary tribute located on the World Trade Center site. Dedicated to the 2,977 people who died in the attacks in 2001 and the six people involved in the 1993 bombing, the memorial is a jarring tribute to the tragedies of the attacks. Located here, there are twin reflection pools of a half acre and huge waterfalls lining the exact footprints of the twin towers. All the names of those who died are engraved on bronze panels on parapets throughout these pools. This museum recalls 9-11, the weeks leading up to it, and its aftermath, but it also details the lives of those who perished. The museum features a fire truck, the magnificent last column and fragments from the aircraft. Central Park. New York's population doubled, and it desperately needed more green space. In order to achieve this, a giant strip was cut from 5th Avenue to 8th Avenue and 59th Street to 110th Street in the middle of Manhattan's grid system. In 1873, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox completed this captivating landscape on 843 acres. In Central Park there are ponds, lakes, reservoirs, schist outcrops, almost 50 fountains, 21 playgrounds, complete sports facilities, 25,000 trees, and dozens of interesting landmarks, such as the stately Bethesda Terrace. An endless array of activities is available, from a zoo to boating to yoga classes, outdoor theater, and horse carriage rides. You can burn tons of calories walking around Central Park. Since Central Park is so large, renting a bike might be the best way to get around. Among the park's highlights are Strawberry Fields, the Delacourt Clock, the Alice in Wonderland statue, and Bethesda Terrace. Bike tours are one of the best ways to explore Central Park. During the day, you can explore Manhattan and its neighborhoods and enjoy the park's beautiful surroundings. NYC is known as the city that never sleeps, so a nighttime tour of the park will give you a lasting impression. A nature walk at nightfall offers a totally different perspective of the park, the gleaming lights, and panoramic views of the city. Statue of Liberty. In 1886, immigrants making the journey to New York were greeted by this symbol of freedom, designed by Frederick August Bartholdi, with a metal framework built by Gustav Eiffel. On Liberty Island in New York Harbor, 
The Statue of Liberty is a colossal neoclassical sculpture. The Statue of Liberty depicts the Roman goddess Libertas striding free from shackles at her feet, holding a torch aloft in her right hand and carrying a tablet with the date of the Declaration of Independence. Battery Park is the main departure point for Liberty Island in New York. Among the highlights is a ride on the Liberty Island Ferry, a narrated and guided tour of the Statue of Liberty, a visit to the Statue of Liberty Museum, and an excursion to Ellis Island to see the historic Great Hall and Stairs of Separation. Booking well in advance is essential for trips to the top of the crown. At the end, don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, share the video, also leave your valuable comment below. See you in the next one.